now uh, and assuming sarah for everyone that is watching they they do call their leads there's there's no doubt about that i looked into their system you know they're they're bang on uh, so Nasir and Sarah, do you want to explain to everyone where you're finding the obstacles with the leads that you have in your system? Only when they give me the four digit code. <laughs> Somebody should have gotten a text message. Yeah, I'm not sure where they are. They were just there. They were just there. They may need to connect. Their audio is not on and connected. So you might want to go in and turn off their two-factor authentication. Okay. All right, we'll do that. Hi there. We can hear you now. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Here, do you have a four-digit code that was texted to you? Okay, one six eight four. You're wonderful. Now, Nasir, do you want to share with everyone what your obstacles in the CRM are right now? Because we know you're calling your lease. So what, what are the main hurdles for you that you're trying to overcome? Mostly Sarah is calling. And uh, recently I called you for the thing that um, the, um, the leads are getting training from, like we are getting training from you and they are training, getting training for somewhere else. So uh, as soon as you say, um, hi, Crystal, you know, thank you or not thank you, whatever, like thank you, you register on our website, looking, you know, homes in the VP price range of this. So, you know, mostly sometimes like when it's still you didn't finish it, or oh, I am in the meeting, I'm in the office, can you call me later? One is that, which is very common. Uh, so if first place why they pick up the phone and the thing, right? Then now we are trying something new, like um, Sarah was trying to, you know, go with the address. Hey, Crystal, that you, you know, you're looking for the home um, X, Y, Z, Main Street. So we are trying that one. So that sometimes it worked. So, you know, the main goal is to check the goal that when they are planning to buy, are they ready or not, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's the thing, yeah. Okay, so it's more or less that first conversation and getting them to continue the conversation so you can get through all the questions that you want to ask. Yeah, yeah, so blocker and before it was going okay, but still, you know, like most leads are, some they don't have a proper phone number. I'm talking about those have, right? At mm -hmm. least a proper number and we are reaching on time. And um, so, you know, that's it. Okay. So what would be a win for you today? What, what is the most important lesson that you want to walk away with today? Um, the most proper way to reach to the uh, leads and like hook them somehow. This is of course the most like okay. important thing. Especially we are how to take, tackle this one that, you know, uh, and this is, I know that's all, um, you know, like, and they made a story you called me around 5 p.m. And if you call 5 p.m., they, they're not picking up at that time. Yep. And so, so I'm just done with that thing. And um, I'm not going to waste my more evenings. I'm doing in the morning and remaining we are going to do on Saturday and Sunday. Maybe mm -hmm. we are adding Sundays now we, uh, to call. Uh, because uh, that's as good I'm busy. Five Call me 5.30. So 5.30, oh, I'm in the car. So what? So like sometime kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just to break the ice, you know, main thing is to break the ice and just at least get a few things rolling on. And then things will, you know, normally those are okay. Once you have a few conversation thing, then, you know, you can ask something. And, and your, everything that you're saying is 100% common and it probably is one of the biggest frustrations that we all have doing this. I, I get frustrated with it because I call hundreds of leads a day myself. And, you know, so sometimes I just, my, my fiance will be in the background. He's like, what just happened? I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, you can't even explain what you hear. I'm driving. I can't talk right now. Well, why did you answer the phone? You know, it, it's, you, you just, you, you'll never figure people out. And the one thing that I had to, not had to, but I have to always remember is I have to look at this moment for this moment and the next moment for the next moment. Because once I push through today, I, today my comment was I had to kiss a lot of frogs this morning to get the appointment. 
And I got a lot of hanging up on, I'm at work, I can't talk right now, click. But then I got to one that he's like, yeah, he goes, we started looking again. My wife wanted to move to Florida. We cut that off. And she said, no, then we were moving, then we were staying here. Then she said, no, and he goes, she's trying to make up her mind. And now we're staying. And people just inherently, we don't like any type of confrontation. We don't like to tell people no. We don't like to be bothered. We don't want to be sold to, which is equals I'm not answering the phone because avoidance is the easiest way to not have confrontation or not to do something that you don't want to do. And we have to remember a lot of these leads, I'm looking at 817 leads that you have in your dashboard. How many of these people, could your market even handle 817 buyers right now? No. 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 So what we have to look at is go, oh, thank God, because I would never be able to keep up and I would never be able to sell them what's out there. So we really have to think about this from a different perspective. All we need to find out is out of these 817 people, who's ready to buy a house right now? And who do I have to be in alignment with to make that happen? And the more we're working our dashboard, the more interactive we are with it, the more chances we're going to have of hitting them at the right place at the right time. I had a lady that I called, she was over 2000 days old in a database. Zero phone calls to her, over 2000 days, she's never had a phone call. She had not even looked at anything in the database for over 2000 days. She didn't even know she was sitting in this, in this agent's database. Call her up. Hey, a couple of years ago, maybe a few years ago, you were looking at some properties in blah, blah, blah. She goes, you know what? We goes, she goes, we just started looking. Our neighbor just two weeks ago put their house on the market and got more for it than we ever thought they would. And she says, we're, we're ready now. How does that even happen? But the equation that we don't know are the hundreds of phone calls that preempted up to that. So we've got to kiss a lot of frogs get, to get the win and know that the more frogs we kiss, the closer we get, because it, I promise you, there are people in here waiting for you. But if we miss that opportunity, because uh, they told me to call me back at five o'clock and they didn't answer the phone. I'm just going to let you go. I don't want to call you anymore. They're not doing it on purpose. They have that, like I explained before, you're not important to them. They don't know who you are. They don't care who you are. And a house is not top of their mind. And the only reason it's top of your mind is because that's your job. So they get a win one they, they get a win one day. They were online searching, thinking maybe they might move in the future, but it's not a priority for them because it might be a year down the road or two years down the road. So they may not even know that it's you calling back after five o'clock if they didn't save your number. We do a lot of things during the day and I can tell people to call me back and then I get so many different phone calls coming in. I don't know which one's which and I just don't want to answer any of them because I'm exhausted by the end of the day. So we can't take anything personal and we have to consciously rethink our thoughts to say, probably not a good time for them. I'll try them again. I'll try them again. I'll try them again. I usually set a task three times in an attempt. If I, if, if, if they were ones, it's like, call me back after five, I will try calling them back on, on my calendar, which like two times after five. And then once on the weekend, three times, three strikes, you're out. I'll just throw you back into my call rotation and mark you as night call. You're not going to get called as often as my other people because I only call night calls, you know, once a week, every other week. So we have to tend to look at them as, well, now we know exactly when to get a hold of them. Or you're texting and you're emailing because sometimes they can text during the day. I, I've texted people. I've had people hang up on me, send them a text message and go, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry we got disconnected. I'm just wondering, are you planning on purchasing a home this year or next year? And they'll come back and go this year, but I, I, I was at work, I can't, I, I can only text. And then we can have a texting conversation. 
but we're so quick to assume because we're so used to getting blown off, quite frankly, right? It's, it's easier for us to assume that they don't want us to call that, that, that we're bothering them. But at the end of the day, that's really what our job is. And if we give up and get frustrated too easily, we're, we're going to lose more deals than we actually create. So with that being said, when we hit that objection of I'm at work, I can't talk right now. I am actually going to hang on one second. I am going to, I'm, I'm actually going to, can I, can I play a live call? Yeah, 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 yeah. Crystal, is, is that okay if I, if I play a call from, from what I did this morning? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Cause I think this might, this, this is a really good call. I just have to grab it right quick. So I just assigned it to him today to call back at 2.30. I just got to find it real fast. I wasn't prepared. It should be in its tab. There it is. So I set a task for my agent to call him back. It's only a minute and 21 seconds. Hello, Israel? Yes? This is Beverly. You do want to check in. You have been online in the past looking at some homes in the Bucks County area. And I just wondered if you had intentions or what you might have been looking for. Um, can you call me back to, uh, after two o'clock? Because I'm working right now. Now, Nazir, is, it, is this is this what you get? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I gotta play this. Certainly. Thank you, you very much. I just want to make sure that you have intentions of a purchase. Is it worth the conversation? But I was, so, and I was going to move to Florida, buy a house from in Florida. Uh huh. Um, but uh, like I said, I don't know. Because now my wife's tell me. So I, was, I was seeing a house here, and, oh. I was, and the bank approved me, and I was going to get it. And then my wife changed her mind and said she wants to go to Florida. Now she's telling me she don't know. <laughs> so I'm between. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'll give you a uh, give me a call around uh, after two two thirty. No. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got to go to doctor's to, today. Oh. I'm going to I'm going to Puerto Rico for the um, week uh, week okay. for vacation. Okay. And they um, how you say? For that COVID test, so I don't know how what time I get out. So if you can tomorrow, okay, got it. Yeah, we'll get. I'm gonna say I'm gonna save your number because I've been trying to get a hold of you, get a hold of you, and I can't find your number. So I'm gonna save this number. Fantastic, and I'm I'm gonna actually send you over to Phil. One of so he couldn't talk. All I wanted to know, because because people will say, "Can I call you back later?" or "Can you call me back later?" and then they never answer the phone. Mm -hmm. Well. I just want to know, are you worth my time to call you back? Because you're just saying something to get me off the phone. Please don't just say something to get me off the phone because I, I do set time aside to call you back, right? So we have to hit the objections before they are objections. And just ask them, is it something that you genuinely want to discuss? Do you have intentions of making a purchase? If so, I will call you back because then you're like, well, I got a value, I got a valuable lead to call back. You know, you just, you just don't have a tire kicker. And usually you can get a little bit more information. They're just too worried about getting into a long conversation at work that they're not going to be able to get out of because most people at work can take a couple of minute phone call, but Sometimes people have a long story to tell of why they're moving and they know they can't sum it up within minutes and they really do want to have more time to have the conversation. It's just not the appropriate time. We're, we just weren't equipped with what to say back to be able to ask them, you know, do you really want to have a conversation with this? Are you planning on making a purchase within the next three to six months? Because I don't need to call you back. You don't need to call me back. I'll call you back in three months. So if we're upfront and honest with them out of the gate, we can save ourselves a little bit of frustration. Is that helpful, Ms. Year? Yeah, we'll try. I put the note here. Do you have any have anything genuine to discuss? Yeah. Do you, do you, do you have intentions on making a purchase anytime mm -hmm. soon? Mm -hmm. Because the most important thing for us to know is their urgency. If they're like, ah, no, I'm not going to be buying for the next year or two. Because I, I had another call later. She's like, I'm on hold. I said, well, how long are you going to be on hold for? Are you on hold for a month? Are you on hold for the year? She says, it's probably going to be next year. And then I asked, are you, do you own a home or are you renting? 
Because what I want to find out is if they are in a rent that's going to be expiring, they're going to have to make a decision before they re-sign a new lease. If they're month to month or they're in a home, there's really no time frame for them to be forced to into a decision. But if they're in a lease term, a lot of people don't want to re-engage in a full year lease because they don't want to be stuck for a year. So they're going to be faced with a decision. So there's a little bit of pain there. If they're on month to month, there's really no pain because they don't have to, they don't have a time frame that they're working against, if that makes sense. So we just want to find out, do you have intentions? Is there, is there urgency there to try and get them off the fence, so to speak? So I do that. If they say I'm in a meeting, if I'm driving, if I'm at a funeral, I don't care what excuse they give me. I just, I want to know, do you have intentions? Do you want to have this conversation? All right. Okay. And what was it? So I know that that was a big one was, and what, what was the other thing that you had said this year is, is one of your objections? And do you feel any objections? So maybe, um, like, I, I feel sometime, I don't know how long after I should give them a call because it looks like sometimes it is a little too much. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, if you don't go to that too much, you are, you feel that you may lose them, you know, like, yeah. so it is a kind of uh, very, not very clear for me that really how long it should be and what is proper follow up. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, I, I'm writing a blog exactly about this situation because I still deal with opening up, you have a great conversation with a lead. And, you know, I'm thinking of one in particular that they are, they just got engaged and they're in a rental together, but they're trying to decide if they should buy a home when their lease is expiring in August or if they should focus on their wedding. That's a valid point, right? What, what comes first, the, the home or the wedding? Money, down payment, you know, what, what do we focus on? Do we sign another year lease? That, that, this is like a life-changing moment. Now, our selfishness says buy a house, buy a house, right? Because we want to we, we want to be able to check mark that box and put the check in our in our bank. But the most important thing is let's get you all of the information to make an educated decision. Because in a rental situation, you're making someone else rich and you're not investing in anything in your future. Don't want to make you buy a house, but let's just look at what it looks like. How much are you paying a month for rent? She was paying like $1,800. If we could buy you a home or find you a home that was in and around what you're paying for rent, how much sense would it be for you to purchase? Will be much better than renting. Okay. Have you spoke to anybody about what price point that is going to put you at for a comfortable mortgage payment? No. Okay, well, we have lots of time. We're only in February. This is in August, right? My suggestion, just talk to a lender, see what all you can get approved for, see what that payment looks like and just play around with what's on the market. I'm not telling you you have to buy. I'm just asking you to do a little bit of homework and do a little bit of investigation because if you're online looking anyway, you might as well have some kind of intention to see if it's going to happen. And if it doesn't, you haven't lost anything because you can still stay in your rental and then you know that you know. She's like, oh my gosh, yes, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. Great. I'm going to get fill your information. What is your work schedule? When, when is it a good time for him to reach out? What do we hear, Nazir? Call me after about 5, 530 when I get off work, right? She didn't answer. So it's now we're playing good cop, bad cop. I'm trying to get in touch with her. The lender's trying to get in touch with her. We have about three or four phone calls into her. And Sarah, this is where we kind of get lost, right? 
she pops up into my, it makes it like, if I try and call you the first time and you don't answer the phone, Hey, Sarah, this is Beverly. Just want to check in. I know Phil's been trying to get a hold of you. Hey, if anything's changed, no big deal. Just want you to know that we are available here to answer any of your questions. I will try you back next week. I reset it to call back the next week. My rule of thumb is I leave a voicemail, I attempt a call. I leave a voicemail, I attempt a call. When I do the call attempt, I don't leave a voicemail. What kind of message you leave for, as a voicemail? I just say, hey, Sarah, this is Beverly. We spoke last week. I know Phil's been trying to get a hold of you. So just address what came up on the last phone call. So, hey, Sarah, this is Beverly. I, I know that we talked about sending you properties. This is another one, right, that we follow up. And I have your search set up and it looks like the emails may be going to spam. So I'm not certain if you're, if you're receiving them, just want to check in and just remind you to check your spam. I will check in with you in, if it's a Monday, maybe Friday, if it's a Wednesday, maybe the following Monday, I'll check in with you next week or I'll check in with you in a few days. I like to let them know. I want to keep calling until you let me know, until you give me an update. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Okay, one more. Uh, sorry to cut you down here. Like maybe okay. I'll miss that point. So, for example, as a new lead, okay. So, how many calls you think? Then we just normally I put right now me and Sarah doing at least ten calls every second day, other day until you know. Like some people, you know, they don't pick up the phone. Whatever you do, right? Right. So, right. what stage? Like ten is okay or less is okay to stop them and put it for you know for well, maybe for the quarterly or whatever. Sure. So new leads, our rule of thumb is in the first two weeks, the first 14 days, six to eight phone call attempts. Six to eight. Okay. If they don't four pick text up in messages and four emails. Oh, so four text messages, four emails separate without the thing. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's in the first 14 days. So we're heavier in our attempts in the first two weeks. Okay. Then after the two weeks, it's just once a week. As long as they're actively engaged, opening the emails and looking at the e alert or looking at the, at the home search alerts. Okay. And what you say, suggest for the text message, short lines are good. Text message, did you get my email about the list of homes that we sent you? Or we can also do some offers, but we are doing some cashback offers. Can we put that offer also? If, if you're allowed to, you can do that. I don't like to do that out of the gate because they don't care if you have an offer, if they're, if they're not interested, if, if they're just looking. Because those first couple of weeks, it's imperative to find out where they are in the process. We can give and give and give. I, I can say, Nasir, I have the best amazing cake that you are going to just drool over, but you're a diabetic and you can't eat sugar, right? <laughs> so we don't want to offer or give anything until we know their needs. We don't want to sell steak to a vegetarian. So the most important thing in those first two weeks is finding out where they are in the process, their time frame, their motivation, their urgency. Sounds so delicious. questions, because right now we just want them to raise their freaking hand, right? Because we're so tired of people like not being commutative, just raise your hand. I'm happy with it. Yes, I'm happy with it. Yes, I'm buying this year. So our questions in those first two weeks are so many emails are not getting delivered. So we want to make sure that they are getting our emails because once we've paid for the lead, we want to keep them. We don't want them to go out and Google again and fall into someone else's dashboard. We want to make it as convenient for them as possible to be receiving what they originally came in to look for. So those first communications, my text and my email piggyback off of each other. I have been trying to reach you about your home search. Did you get the email we sent of the list of homes? And then my email is simply, we want, we're, we've been trying to reach you by phone. When is the best time to reach you? And then we, I have another email in there that, that says something to the fact of, I know, we, I know weeks can be hectic, are weekends better for you, for us to call? 
So just trying to find out when communication is a good time and what their needs are, because this has nothing to do with about us, nothing, unfortunately. We know we're great at what we do. We know we want to make a sale. We know we're hungry, but it has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with finding out where they are in the process and when we're going to fit into their life. So it goes back to those roots of customer service, right? So started throwing gimmicks and offers at them as a sales tactic versus a customer service. So if you focus more on, on that customer service, educating and guiding them through that process and boom, that's just a bonus that you throw in there after having a decent conversation. Um, but if you're trying to lure them in through a cash back, then that goes into a sales tactic. No one wants to be sold to. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll put the notes on me. And I am, I see a question in here from yes. Vince. Best text to open up prospect. I am entering in a text in the chat I was on a webinar yesterday. They sent this out to a hundred of their leads that were actively engaged that they have not spoke to. And they immediately got four responses. One of the responses was yes. The ISA immediately picked up the phone, made the phone call and set a listing appointment. This was yesterday. They're going to, they're going to listing appointment tomorrow. What was the text? <laughs> <laughs> I am. Uh, I just copied it, but I got to preempt the. You are putting it in the chat? Yes, I am. And then she had her information, your name and phone. All right. And sometimes it's just something super simple. Right, just to stir the pot to try to generate some level of a response. I'm going to share as well in that chat there a link to an article that we have that Shauna here, our ISA in house here, that's doing uh, converting through text, which she uses like just different. And they have to, they're short and simple and to the point, not long paragraphs. I see a lot of people create SMS messages as if they're writing an email. Uh, simple and to the point, easy for them to read and respond to. Yep. So th this one I put in there, it's like I saw you had a previous inquiry online regarding buying a home. I was curious to know, did you already find a property or are you still in the market? And this is great for your older leads that have become inactive. So this chat link is going to be staying here or should we just- it, Oh, you know what? It just went, you know what? I think I have to change, hang on one second. Because once the conversation is it gone, just went to the I took a picture for this message, but like yeah, one second, Vince. Do you see it now, Vince? It will take the picture then. For some reason, it it just okay. There you go. It, it was just it was defaulted to panelists for some reason. Hmm. No, we have it here. Previous in Guardian online again. So these are good. So just remember, you want to you want to text with purpose. You want to email with purpose, and it doesn't take place at the phone calls. So to answer your question, you know it's heavy those first two weeks. When we get a hold of somebody, and then so I'm going to go back to your question, Sarah, as far as what does that follow up look like? What does that nurture look like, and how many times? And it, we really do at that point have to go with our gut instinct. You know, like, like this lady, I had a great conversation with her about her wedding, about this, about that, and talking to the lender. I thought she, I, I thought she was going to take the call from the lender. I really seriously thought she was going to take the call. It's been a week. The lender has a call. I have a call. So I reset. I'm going to reach into her next week. So I do like to follow up with a text message thereafter. Hey, Sarah, I just left you a voicemail. It's Beverly. I was just checking in. I know Phil's been trying to get in touch with you about just to educate you on the financing. No big deal. You know, no obligation. If anything's changed, just let me know. I'll try you back again next week. I like to eliminate, I got this sun like glaring on my face. I like to eliminate making them feel bad. So think about it on your end. Because it happens to every single one of us. We dodge phone calls. 
you're like, oh God, oh, oh man, I forgot to call. Oh, I got to call her back. Oh, I can't, I can't even think about this conversation right now. So we want to not encourage them to not take our phone call, but we want them to know that it's okay to not call us back. It's okay if, if, if something has changed. We want to eliminate them feeling bad on the other end because that's the only way probably that they're going to talk to us because nobody wants to be a bearer of bad news. Nobody wants to tell you that things have changed. People they procrastinate too, right? We, we all procrastinate. <laughs> so they may not have an update for you. So they're just avoiding that conversation because they know they haven't held up their end of the deal of what maybe they were supposed to do in between the time frame. I'm, I'm, I'm currently guilty of that. I have my cousin who's been chasing me around, but she's, you know, I said, keep following up with me because one of these days I'm going to get my act together and I'll have that stuff done and we'll go, but keep reminding me, like, just keep checking in. Like, I don't care. You're not bothering me, but I need that because I know it's there. It's just, we just need that little push and that little reminder. Exactly. And, there and the I link you send us here, can you send on our email, please? The link? Just open the link right now, Miss Sierra. Oh, okay, okay. So it's going to be saved there? Yeah. Okay, thank and you. And then you'll see it on your Google. And then you can, yeah, once you open it, you'll, you'll, you should be able to save it or save it in your drive. Okay. Okay. So now we are doing like, I don't know, uh, our expenses, like we are doing tag marketing, we are doing um, um, Google AdWord, we are doing the Facebook, like, I don't know, but um, just telling you, but I think the management, you have to talk with them, like the uh, Facebook ad is really, really slow. I started, then I stopped, then again, I started like three weeks, there was not a single lead. Uh, then we, I asked her to change it to the, uh, to the buyer now instead of seller one so um, and then i'm doing some other ones right you know like just coming just sold kind of things on the facebook too mm -hmm. management i'm being there so um, let's see how it's going to be because um <clears throat> leads are um like of course you don't get you know like from all the leads you get very few with those are with, um, clear number and the right email and everything yeah, it's, it's, you should be able to like Facebook generally it's pulling their Facebook information, but a lot of us signed up for Facebook, like what, 10, 12 years ago when Facebook first started. And do we use that same email? I know a lot of people don't actually use the same email that they have associated with that account. So some people will update it nonetheless, uh, but often enough, a lot of people don't have their phone numbers on Facebook so that they have to manually plug in. Um, it's hit or miss. The, the lead quality when it comes to their information is essentially equivalent to that you're going to find on Google. There's no difference there. So which one you prefer more, like the Google or the Facebook? Uh, it depends on how your ads are run on, on Facebook, 100%. If you're using bait and hook ads, you're going to have a lot of tire cookers. I know we don't do that uh, if we're setting up your ads, but I know some companies do. Uh, so more to the point and a more realistic offer, things that people may be looking for. Like, so a certain price point of a home in an area that is realistic, that is achievable. Uh, you will also get more promising Facebook leads when you're actually doing that with an actual listing because the leads that register for more information pertaining to a specific listing are generally more uh, ready or I guess they like prepared to make a purchase. They're actually inquiring about a specific property. People don't usually do that unless there's intent behind it. Yeah, I noticed that thing because coming soon, I put the ad for the coming soon and the management fee, I'm thinking I'm paying $100 and ad per day is 10, but we get like six, seven leads. Mm -hmm. But at least we get something, but um, the regular Google ad for 250, I'm paying for like monthly um, ad price. We didn't get anything in the three weeks, not a zero, you know, lead. Well, there so could have been just something. Particular address was good because one of my listing is coming in March. So we put coming soon. Yeah. And that gets some kind of results, but like the other one is just. Yeah. Your, your Google should always be generating leads. It shouldn't go that far. 
with this. So if you ever notice that, just reach out to support. They'll they'll jump in and see if there's something going on with, with your campaign. That's all. So I'm going to go back on when I had mentioned before about catching our objections before they become objections or <laughs> stopping our monkey mind from telling us we shouldn't follow up with this person or we're bothering this person or oh, should I really check in with them? Cause I just called them like a week ago. Oh, they, they haven't answered my call in like five times. They're not going to answer my call. I'm going to play another call that happened yesterday. Um, I was in a team meeting and it was kind of like the jaw dropped because it's so simple, but yet sometimes we're afraid to have these conversations, but the, the, the less we think about doing something and just do it, the more proactive we can be and the more action we're going to be taking. Hey, Brenda, this is Beverly. I am an assistant over here at the Night Through team and I'm calling you. I've been speaking with Carrie. You have been looking at some homes online and I'm just checking in to kind of see where you are in the process. How, how it's going for you? I actually need to get started like yesterday. <laughs> so what's going on? How can we assist and get you into something, Brenda? Okay. First, I need to get myself qualified in my bank. Okay. That's been a little problem. Well, let me ask you, as far as, have you been talking to your bank? Well, no, I have not been talking to my bank because my bank don't is not at the bank. They're somewhere else. Exactly. And my suggestion, Brenda, oh my gosh, it's 2021, right? We don't yeah. know what ends up or down. My suggestion is I can align you with our lender. Um, banks, they're kind of shying away from doing the mortgages and even the mortgages that they are doing, you have to have like seller A1 perfect life. And they make it very difficult, all the hoops that they make you jump through. So it can get really frustrating working directly with the bank. And they, they, they kind of, it, it's kind of like ordering meat at the deli. They give you a number, then they never call you. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it's been like that. But prior, prior to, prior to, um, I can't name an appointment, but I had to go out for surgery. And when I came back, I had not been able to get back in touch with the uh, loan officer. Okay. Well, Brenda, what I would like to do, Carrie works with Whitney. What I would like to do is just connect you two and kind of see, you know, where you are. Do you have any concerns about your credit at all? No, not because I don't really have a whole lot on my credit. Because oh. um, the last thing I paid off was my uh, car loan. That was it. So okay. Okay. Zero credit card. So in regards to your current living situation, are you living with family? Are you in a rental? I am living with family that I need to find a place to go like yesterday. <laughs> Get me out. <laughs> um, and can I, I uh, renovate it because we got issues with the floor, foundation. Okay. And as far as, um, you know what, I don't want to put the for the horse because it doesn't matter where, how much, and, and what. Um, we got to get you with the lender so that, that we can really know exactly where we can focus our attention to find you a home that's going to is, is gonna work for you. Um, when can I have Whitney reach out to you today? Uh, can you send me her number and I have to reach out to her because I'm actually outside working. It's just so happened I have my phone on me. My phone is usually laying on top of my desk. The proverbial blow off. Right? Yeah. I can do that, Brenda. Um, I, I will text it to this number and okay. we'll have her information. And because, you know, it, I, I'm hearing you saying that you went out yesterday. Is it okay if we're aggressive and, and we kind of take the ball and, and keep over contacting you to make sure that we can make this happen for you? That's fine. Okay. <laughs> I have work. I don't usually have my phone on me. My phone used to be in my office on my desk because uh, I. Working out on a car uh, lot at an auction. Oh, okay. Not allowed to have, uh, have a phone. Uh, phone, phone okay. so, so perfect. Now that we know, you know, that you're limited, you know, our job is we're, we're not going to feel bad, you know, just if we don't hear back from you, we'll, we'll just keep, because our, our job is to make this happen for you, okay? 
Okay. Because right. I can, because I, I usually got to go to lunch between one thirty, one o'clock ish. Okay. Perfect. And I can check the phone. All right. Wonderful. So now that we know that, um, we will certainly be in touch, and you can look forward to hearing from Whitney. Okay. All right. Everybody has a story. She came out of surgery. She, she lost the passion, mm -hmm. but God, I want to be out yesterday, make this happen for me. But she's so caught up in freaking life that she doesn't want to have to go through the steps necessary to make it happen. She needs to be a little influenced and excited. And that's what our job it's overwhelming, is. Overwhelming. Cause she's looking at it as an entire project rather than let's, let's start with square one, like step by no step. No wonder right? people don't answer the phone. Yeah. <laughs> It's like there's way too much. Her head. She's yeah. like, oh God, I went out yesterday, but I don't even know where to start. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I knew we were going to get the blow off. I knew she wasn't going to answer the phone. I do this too often. She's not going to answer the phone when the lender calls. But guess what? We just got permission to blow up her freaking phone, mm -hmm. make her block us. She wants this. And I told her it is our job to make this happen. I don't care if you don't answer the phone. We're going to blow up your phone. And what did she do? The best times, like between one and two o'clock, whenever I'm on my lunch break, I can check my phone. Hello, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So now, Sarah, would you feel bad calling her back again and again and again? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask for it because we can sit here and think about it all day long. And the only reason I, I, I suck at the follow-up. I, I like the new, like that. that's just fun and challenging to me. And then the follow-ups, it's like the job's already done. But that's where you make the money. So with, with our clients that, that we're dialing for, we've actually taken our systems to where we're following up for you now. So I'm enacting those systems together right now. And I'm like, how can I just eliminate and make this easier for me? Because I go in and I, and I do, I overthink. I'm like, oh, I just called them last week. I don't know that I want to leave a message. So I do the voicemail. I'm like, I, I'm just, they're all a science experiment for me right now. I'm going to blow up their phone because I had a great conversation with them last week or two weeks ago, or a month ago. A lot of these people I talked to in October and November that I'm following up with that wanted to spring market. And you know what? I do the happy dance when they don't answer the phone because I'm like, hey, this is Beverly. I can get on the next thing, get on the next thing, get on the next I'm not stuck on the phone. Listening to their surgery, listening to their mom dying, listening to them. I, I, I talked to a girl yesterday. She's like, I'm doing horrible. I have COVID. <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm sorry. So tell me about that. And she goes, well, I'm not really sick. She goes, I'm just, I'm more annoyed that I'm not really sick, but I'm stuck at home. I can't go anywhere than I am that I have COVID. So everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this case, what do you say? Like how you, uh, how if you, if you hear their problems, you know, their dad or something happened. So how you start talking about the <laughs> profession? Oh, Sarah, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. Gosh, life just happens to us sometimes when we don't expect it, doesn't it? Sarah, right now, I'm not sure what to do for you. What would you like me to do? I don't care if you buy tomorrow or next year. I just really want to build this relationship and be there for you when it's convenient for you. What would you like me to do right now? Are you interested in receiving properties? They may say yes, they may say no. Either way is that there's no wrong answer. What, what can I do? When, when should I just call you back again just to check in on you? And I promise you, you will be surprised at what they say. Because I genuinely get, oh, next week would be fine. You can call me anytime. Or you know what? June would be great because I'm gonna be going out of town in March and then May, graduation, June would be awesome if you could check back in with me in June. Sarah, you got it. And that's where I've had to take my thought process out of it. So if I ask them and put it on them and I follow up and follow through, not only does it empower me because then I'm following up and doing what I say I'm gonna do. It, it gives me the confidence to know that I truly am the best agent for them because I'm asking them what their needs are and how I can help them. And honestly, they don't even know. People are not used to that question. And when you give that question, it puts you at a different level. 
because they get that feeling of, wow, she really cared enough to ask me. She just didn't say, okay, when you see something, call me back. Cause that, that, that's our, that, that, that's our go-to, right? Well, if you see something come through, just give me a holler. Cause we don't know what else to say or we don't know what else to do. Okay, that's, that's one very good. Okay, uh, another thing, um, we have been in touch with some, uh, like it is not about the leads online. I don't know if it is right time to ask or what. Same thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, we have been in touch with some, you know, home sellers and like, let's say in, uh, after holidays, I was in touch with some of them and they, they asked me to, you know, give them a call maybe closer to summer or like in the spring or whatever uh -huh. now the market is really very hot and uh, so you feel that they may you know go ahead right now yeah uh, but always it is a doubt to you know like if i bother them again like very quick so maybe they get a kind of annoyed or what to do like this is the thing <laughs> so let me ask you guys you go to the store and are you a shoe person or jewelry person, Sarah? Uh, let's say shoe person. <laughs> shoe person. You go to the store and you find this gorgeous pair of shoes, but they're $300. You're like, oh my God, I really want these shoes, but I got to sell a house. Okay, when I sell that house, I'll come back and get the shoes. <laughs> well, yeah. This is real life, right? You can't get the shoes out of your mind, but you know you can't have them at this moment. And you know that in June, you have settlements lined up and you know you're going to go back to that store in June and buy the, buy, buy the shoes. And you're thinking about the shoes, you're thinking about the shoes, it's going to be June. But the sales clerk calls you and says, Sarah, I know you said not to tell you about the shoes until June, but I just wanted to let you know, we do have a sale coming up and they're going to be half price. I just want to let you know, they'll still be here in June, but I just want to let you know that they will be discounted if you choose. How would that make you feel? Yeah, of course, yeah, that is. That is go get some <laughs> yeah, I yeah like, you're like, I want to go buy them or you know what, I just, I can't, oh man. Then you're like, oh God, I really want to buy them, but geez, and then, then, you're, in a, then, then you're in a pickle, right? It's no more than with the seller. Do you see how much we overthink things and talk ourselves out of our, our meals? We're sitting here worried about what they're gonna say on the other end instead of just doing it. If we are coming from a place of service because we know it's potentially in their best interest, it changes the game. But as salespeople, we don't wanna be salesy. So we feel bad calling them and asking for business. So we have to flip the script in our heads to say, oh my gosh, if they could sell their house right now, I don't know what the market's gonna be like in four months. We may have a complete flip of the market. I know what we know now. I know that we have buyers that would just gobble up their home. They wouldn't have to do anything with a home inspection. They wouldn't have to do anything with repairs. We could sell it as is. It would be such a simple sale if they would be in a position. So I would just call them back and say, hey, Crystal, you know what? I was just thinking about you and I'm really excited, you know, in, in the summer when you guys, you know, are thinking about selling, but I just wanted to let you know. This is what we're dealing with in the market. I don't care when you move. I don't care when you put your home on the market. I just, I had to let you know what's happening right now. Would there be any way you would consider selling sooner than later? And they're going to say yes or no. And they may say, well, maybe. Well, I'll tell you what, this is all I want to do. I do not want to make you move prematurely. I just want to be able to give you a price and let you know what buyers are paying for homes, homes in today's market. And it's not just one buyer. It's probably going to be multiple buyers and we're going to end up being in an escalation situation. You won't have to do anything to your home. 
you have all of the power to be able to say, no, I want to stay here for three more months. You can have my house, but I'm not moving for three months. But you can have agreed upon sale for a higher number, even if the market shifts, because you hold all the power. Yeah, thank you. Always make it about them. So when we overthink why we don't want to do something or why we don't want to bother somebody, change that thought process to how can I make this about them and take the focus off of me? I'm not bothering them. I feel like I'm bothering them. Why do I feel like I'm bothering them? And that's where you're going to get down to the root of where your genuineness is going to come from. And when you come across with genuinity, I don't know if that's a word, it is now, <laughs> they feel it on the other end and they're thankful that you made the call. So it's just being very conscious of your thoughts whenever you're trying to talk yourself out of, I shouldn't call them because I feel bad, I'm gonna try to push them into something. No, you're educating them, educating. Always about giving them enough information for them to be able to make the best decision for their future. Because you don't know what it is. They may not even know what it is. But until you know what you know and you have all of the different situations in front of you, you don't know. Sometimes you have to look at multifaceted examples to be able to make the correct decision. So I always, I like to say, take it away from them. I always like to say, this might not be the time for you to sell. I don't know. But I really want to make sure that you get all of the information possible to be able to make that decision. And if, they, if, if they're just genuinely not ready, we can't make them. We say, okay, that's fine. I, I just wanted to make sure. Because I really think, I, I know that we can get more for your house than what you're thinking right now. But I don't know what's going to happen in four months, five months. Yeah, okay, that's goes back to focusing on your customer service rather than a sales approach. If you always feel like you're selling someone, then you will feel like you're bothering them. Whereas you're just calling to help them. I want to guide you. I want to, hey, I wanted to let you know, right? So it's just more, you're feeding them information to help guide them through a decision. So don't feel like you're bothering them because if you're not doing that, somebody else will be somebody will step in they'll be more convenient educate them on the market and and steal that listing right out from under you exactly they're going to do business with the last per person they just talked to and that's why it's imperative that they say june you say okay i'm going to call you in the end of march <laughs> or the beginning of may april because you always want to back it up just to ensure because buyers are liars and, and sellers are worse Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everybody always has a change of heart you know because just life happens you wake up one day and you're like oh I got that on the other side I think I'm gonna put my home in the market today <laughs> you just never know what moves people and I do see a question along the lines of this in the Q&A if leads are checking emails regularly but no response to the emails text messages or phone calls how do we handle them oh that is the, the number one question, right? Again, it's giving them the permission to not feel bad, not responding. Because I promise you, they feel bad. They just haven't had the time to draft up that email or they haven't, the, the text came through and they, they responded mentally and just like the phone calls. So I always like to communicate back hey, I see that you're getting my emails or hey, I see that you're getting my texts. I just want to check in and just let you know that I'm here. I don't want to push you. I just want, I, I just want to be able to earn your business and let you know that I'm kind of aggressive, which can work to your benefit because I, I, I'm going to do, do my job for you. And we forget that our aggressiveness is coming off as I'm going to find my client a freaking home. They're not even my... And I will tell you the person on the other end of the, on the other end of the, the phone, the email, whatever, like attracts like when they enjoy your aggressiveness, they're like, oh my gosh, look how hard this agent is working for my business. And they don't even know me yet. 
they're going to work that much harder to find me a house because nobody else is following up with me. I've been this, because how many times do we hear, I've been getting emails from five different agents. I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. But who else is calling you and having conversations with you like I am? Who else cares enough to check in to see how you're doing? Last time we talked a month ago, your dog was sick. Because I I had a follow-up today that I had to do. um, Her husband had COVID. And that was um, back in, it was early January. So on my voicemail, hey, Jane, I'm just checking in. Just wondering how your husband was doing. I hope you all are healthy. No need for a call back. I'll check back in with you next week. I just wanted to make sure everybody was happy and healthy and kind of, you know, just talk about where you are right now on track for buying a home. And I promise you, everyone has a story. And if you look at Bobby, take, take that lead and, and work that tactic. And I can almost promise you the chances that they have bought are going to be very slim. The higher chances are life got in the way. I got busy. Kids got sick, whatever, whatever. I haven't really been paying much attention to buying a house. I'm ready to kick it in gear again. That's when, they'll, that's when they'll get back in touch with you. But we have to give them permission to be okay not responding because right now they feel bad. I mean, there's some people who are just assholes. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> I, I mean, it just, it, there, it just is, right? But for the most part, people aren't like, I'm dodging this agent. I'm going to F with them and make them really mad. They, we're, we are driving our own selves more crazy than, than what... We're driving them crazy, I promise you. Absolutely, Bobby, 100% keep sending them the listings. And what we have to think about, right, is we probably captured them through Facebook, through Google, through some type of lead or through some type of online search. We captured them, give them initially what they're looking for. And that's why I'm not a proponent of overindulging on drip campaigns because they don't care. They don't care about anything else other than homes that are popping on the market that, you know, how, how many people say, well, when the right thing comes on, I'll buy it. Well, what is the right thing, right? The, the only way they're going to know the right thing is, is to, to continue to get listings. And just remember, if they're actively engaged looking at the listings in your database, it's less likely that they're on other people's databases because you've made it super convenient and easy for them. And I would just ask them even, you know, send them an email because we can see what they viewed and what they've looked at. My favorite email is, or even text, hey, I saw this property on 123 Main Street just came on the market and I thought of you. Based on all the homes that you were looking at, I thought of you and saw this property. It's not creepy. It's not weird. It happens, right? Mm -hmm. How many times do we think of somebody and they call us, they're like, how did you know? I was just thinking about you. <laughs> yeah. We have a couple of questions here. So Anita, you are asking, do we give a price range when targeting buyers on Google or Facebook ads? Uh, so Google, you can. So if, if you're trying to target a certain price point, usually you would kind of target the lowest price point that you want to hit and then kind of go up from there. So that can be done for marketing. Uh, Facebook, you can do the same, you know, sign up for a list of family homes priced under X amount of dollars in whatever city you can leave it open if you care to just really depends on what that ad is for. But again, realistic, right? So don't be doing like get a list of homes in Toronto priced under 500,000. We know that doesn't exist. (laughs) So something realistic that you know, people will be be actually looking for. Um, So Vince is asking, what do you say to a prospect that is looking at a lot of homes, but no engagement? I think that was kind of similar to that other question where they're opening emails or you can see that they're doing everything, but they're just not responsive to. Yeah, I would. The the best responses that I get to those are a simple text message. Hey, is there a particular price range you want to stay within? You get the price range. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular location that you want to stay within? You get the location. 
So it was just little increments to hone down to get their search more engaged as far as getting them exactly what they're looking for online. Because the more we know about them, the, the more specific we can be. And they don't know it on the other end, but we can control that. They, they and you guys can create like drips, right? So there was the, the webinar last week on creating a 14 day drip that has, I think, five or six text messages in it, but you can create them so that you set it on that lead. It goes out X every so many days and simple questions. And it'll just make sure you put your stopping clauses that once you've made contact with that lead, the campaign stops because now you've made contact with them and then you just carry the conversation on. Um, so Vince, you do in the, in the chat there, there was that Google Drive that does have simple SMS responses or engagement questions to try to get a lead to respond that you can do. Um, video, so Vince, in the drip, if you're doing an email, so one of the things that, that we're doing is a video introduction to these leads so they can actually see who you are, right? So just thanks for registering, you know, we're here to help, any questions you may have, da, 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 whatever it is, your service offering, simple, under a minute, and it puts a face to the name of who's actually sending them those properties and allows, you know, when you're trying to reach out to them, they, they kind of know who it is. They, they, they know who you are essentially. Yeah, I think that's probably it. Um, yeah, it was great discussion though, because I think that these were definitely a lot of pain points that many, actually encounter and they're they're not sure how to handle you know different different scenarios for sure yeah and just to add on to vince's question as far as video in a drip um my my girlfriend agent that's in naples she nails it just from her cell phone when new lead comes in she actually sends them a personal text just quickly saying hey this is Marta, I just wanted you to know that I am a real person over here. You may or may not be ready to buy, but I just wanted you to be able to put a face with my name and I will be sending you some emails. Please let me know if there's anything you need. That's it. Save my number. Always, always ask them to save your number. But that, that makes it very personal. And most people aren't, most agents are not doing that. And so it's no. a little bit better than your competition. Yeah. A little bit different, a little bit better. Is it really one that Yeah. So do you feel this was a win for you? And I know we didn't get in your dashboard when it kind of leaves, but was this a win? Was this helpful for you? Yes, every time you you know you have conversation, you learn something, of course. It's a never ending process. And thank you for your help and the way you explained. Um, overall, we are happy with the team of um, um, Agent locator, that's why, you know, we just added um, online leads and other stuff. And I think we are with them now more than four or five years. So oh, great. Year we are putting more money on these things before we were not doing it. So um, it takes time to per perfect your your follow-ups and mm -hmm. your, your internal. So Sarah is, I think, very good in the follow-ups. That's I'm very sure she do um, good follow-up uh, because recently, the, you know, Back to back, back to back, it was happening with the same thing. Okay, I'm in the office, I'm in the car, can you call me back? So that was a conversation started, right? But sometimes at least you have the conversation opens, that goes, you know, a bit long, then, you know, and things goes normal at that point. But it was good conversation and we learned a lot today. Thank you so much, Beverly, and thank you for sharing your experiences. It was very good. I hope I, can, I, I could have more texts, you know, like a good text that you are sending to your clients. But anyway, it was very good. Like, Do we have on some spot some saved texts? Like we can pick it up from our CRM or somewhere? No, you would have to create them. So in that list I sent you, you can create those. You can create okay. SMS templates, right? So you can just select and send. All right. Okay. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. No You're problem. You're welcome. Goodbye, everybody. Always Goodbye. Goodbye. You guys take care. Stay safe. We'll Definitely. see y'all later. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.